The lack of general awareness remains the biggest challenge, says Dr. Nikit Shah, when treating epilepsy in India. Dr. Shah is a consultant pediatric neurologist at Rainbow Children's Hospital at Hyderabad. Let us now understand what a seizure is. A seizure is something, uh, it's like a producing, getting, or uh, getting produced extra electricity in the brain. Uh, the similar situation what we face at home, uh, we get short circuiting. So, out of the blue suddenly some extra electricity will be produced and uh, spark will happen. So, similar way, uh, the extra electricity is produced in the brain and it manifests outside in the form of a seizure. Seizures are transient occurrences of signs and symptoms due to abnormal excessive electrical activity in the brain. Epilepsy, on the other hand, is the disorder of the brain function characterized by recurring seizures. More than 10% of the population are at a risk of experiencing a seizure during their lifetime, of which 3-4% to develop epilepsy. Epilepsy can be present at any age and affect both genders equally. There are so many myths and misconceptions associated with understanding epilepsy and the many ways used to control it. There are multiple myths and the most common myth I feel whether the epilepsy is contagious. So people do ask this question, somebody in the family or somebody in the neighborhood has this kind of epilepsy, is it contagious, my child plays with it, plays with them, so it is contagious, no. Epilepsy is not at all contagious. The other common misconception, there are multiple food items are known to induce epileptogenesis. That's also another common misconception. People do ask about whether avoiding this food would help in controlling the epilepsy or not. No, no food would be associated with epilepsy. That is a point which I want to stress. I mean, there is no precautions as far as food is concerned to be uh, taken for an epileptic patient. One of the most common misconceptions of epilepsy management is the assumption that pressing metal objects to the palm of the patient reduces seizure intensity. Another misconception is pressing a metal spoon into the mouth of a person undergoing seizure to avoid him or her from swallowing their tongue. It is also not necessarily caused due to positive family history. Around 60% of pediatric epilepsy cases have their onset in childhood due to the inherent causes such as abnormal development of the brain. However, in our country, acquired cases of epilepsy are also prevalent. It is broadly classified under three major groups. One is structural, whether the brain is not formed in a proper way, the way it should have been formed. The second common cause is genetic and the third common cause is metabolic disorders. Uh, so metabolic means there are def uh, the chemical deficiencies in the brain which gives rise to when the brain is not working in a proper f uh, fashion, uh, it results in the epilepsy. And genetic, uh, there are different genes which are involved, there are almost more than 200, 300 different genes which, are, which have been associated with epilepsy. So uh, when the genetic mutation is there or when the gene is deleted or it's not doing it, uh, the function uh, the way it should be functioning, then it results in the epilepsy. Then there are acquired causes such as brain infections which include tuberculosis, encephalitis, meningitis or neurocysticercosis to name a few. In addition to specific causes of epilepsy, there are some commonly experienced triggers in day-to-day -day life that can also lead to a seizure episode. The most common trigger uh, what we say is uh, sleep disturbances. Sleep disturbance doesn't mean that child gets a less sleep. Uh, sleep disturbances means irregular schedule of the sleep. If one day child sleeps, regular school day child sleeps at 9 o'clock and suddenly the holidays start and the child sleeps at 12 o'clock, he's playing mobiles, he's watching video games in a dark room uh, without a proper contrast adjustment. So these are the common triggers. And in that, these kind of situation we usually do also suggest that avoid late night travels, avoid early morning flights where the sleep disturbances are like these are the practical situations where you land up having sleep disturbances. Another common trigger uh, is fever but usually this is common for a small infant or a small child rather than a uh, elder child because uh, the fever usually the frequency of fever which happens is much much more common in a less than 6 year 7 year old kid as compared to a 10 year 12 year old kid. The third common thing 
Uh, third common trigger what we usually see is alcohol. Few of the epilepsies are much, much common when the child takes the alcohol and it could be associatedly associated with missing the medications when the child or any adolescent boy or girl is under the influence of alcohol. Sometimes, some forms of behaviours may also be misinterpreted as a seizure. When a child has breath-holding spells which looks like stiffening after crying or faints, it's caused due to a transient lack of oxygen to the brain. Syncopal attack or chakarana due to dehydration. If the duration of this goes longer, it may appear like a seizure episode. This also could be due to the lack of oxygen in the brain. Pseudo seizure can also happen due to stress. Headaches are often misdiagnosed as a precursor to a seizure attack, which can be misleading in most cases. So unless until the preceding history has been taken into consideration, most of them will be treated as a seizure. History is very important here. The way the movements take place, where the head movements are happening, where the eye movements are happening, where the hands, feet are moving. So these things give a better clue towards the diagnosis. Giving a detailed visual account of the seizure episode to your doctor is most critical for correct diagnosis. Nowadays with the availability of the smartphone, if somebody can capture the event, at least a 10 seconds or a 15 seconds video of the event, uh, if somebody can capture whatever the event child is having, that would give us a great idea and the mislabeling and the misdiagnosis will become extremely uncommon if we have a clear video recording of a, uh, the event what is actually happening. Adult witness gives a best outcome or a best possible help in the diagnosis. So many a times the situation arises when the child has a seizure-like episode or seizure in the school, uh, which is actually witnessed by the teacher or somebody uh, in the school. Uh, and many a times it happens that parents bring the child to the hospital and they are absolutely unaware that what has exactly happened. So in those sort of situations, it is always better to speak with the teacher on the phone or if the teacher or somebody who has actually seen if they can accompany the child, that's always better. All forms of epilepsy do not necessarily mean that the child will have associated problems. On the other hand, children with developmental delays are also at a higher risk for epilepsy. Risk of epilepsy in a general population is approximately 1 to 2 percent. If there are associated developmental delays or there are uh, developmental deviations or speech delays, the risk of epilepsy is 20 times higher as compared to normal population.